What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and exactly two weeks after the release of Beta 1, Apple returns today with iOS 13 Beta 2, and also iPad OS 13 Beta 2. And of course, like always in these videos, we're gonna be discussing the new features and changes, we're gonna discuss battery life, performance, bugs, and more. All right, so we have a lot to cover in this video, so let's not waste any time, let's get straight into it. So first things first, iOS 13 Beta 2 did actually come with a profile this time, as you can see right here. If you guys remember, the first beta of iOS 13 actually required a computer, and for you to manually you know install via ipsw so this time it's a lot easier because we do have the developer profile and as you can see there this update came in at actually a pretty small size 603.2 megabytes i expected around a gigabyte but you can see that is the update size there on my iphone 10r which did come from beta 1 of course and that size will vary depending on your device so let's go ahead and take a look at the new build number here so if you just go ahead and tap on 13.0 you can see there 17a 5508m that is our build number for beta 2 here and the first change actually comes within the about section here as well and I want to talk about that that is the modem firmware you can see there we do have a new modem firmware update and it's 1.51.07 so if you were having any kind of issue with LTE signal or just connectivity in general on beta 1 this new modem firmware update may fix those issues for you so now let's discuss everything else new here in iOS 13 beta 2 and there are a lot of new changes there's a lot of new additions and a lot so I'm probably not going to cover everything in this video I will probably make another follow-up video later this week once I discover more of the new features but these are just some of the things I noticed after playing around with the software for about 45 minutes or so now so now in beta 2 we have a new ringer volume animation so if we go into our settings go to sounds and haptics if we have change with buttons enabled right here which just allows you to change the volume of your you know your ringer volume instead of your volume volume we now have a new animation for that so if we go back to our home screen take a look this is beta one here on the left beta 2 here on the right so when we turn the volume up when we're changing our ringer volume you can see we have a different animation here so on beta 1 we just had the typical new volume HUD and on beta 2 we still do have that new you know volume HUD up there but it uses that area to show us our volume instead of just the typical volume HUD that we get for our volume. So I like this change. And then of course, if we go back to settings and turn off change with buttons and then go back to the home screen, you can see it goes back to the typical volume HUD, the new volume HUD that we all know. So now in beta two, we can connect to a server inside of the files application. So if we go to the main section here, the browse section of files, go to the three dots up in the top right and go to connect to server. You can see we can actually go ahead and connect to a server now, whereas in beta one, if we did that, you can see we just got this right here. It says the operation couldn't be completed. So I'm glad that this finally did get added. And this is going to be a really nice addition to those of you who need access to, you know, store files and transfer files from a server. All right, so now let's discuss 3D Touch and iOS 13, because this is a very controversial topic. We, you know, I made multiple videos on this. We know that it's actually a bug and that Apple is not going to be taking away 3D Touch from 3D Touch enabled devices. But with iOS 13 beta 2, we still don't have full 3D Touch support. Now, of course, neither one of these devices, this one's on beta 1, the iPhone 8, and then this is the iPhone 10R, which doesn't have 3D Touch capabilities. It doesn't have a pressure sensitive screen. But I have seen a lot of reports of people saying that 3D Touch is not back to working like normal, even in beta two. So I'm guessing it's gonna take some time and you know, for that to actually get sorted out, but it's honestly starting to feel like Apple is just going to start prioritizing haptic touch over 3D touch, even on 3D touch enabled devices, which is kind of annoying. So I just wanted to mention that early on because I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments about it and I will be testing that out later this week. So definitely stay tuned for my follow-up video. I will be touching on that and a lot of other things later on this week. So now inside of the camera application, if we wanna take a portrait selfie, we can now use the high key mono setting. So if I go ahead and switch it back to my face, go all the way over here to the very end, high key mono, you can see that's the new setting there. If I go ahead and take the picture, so there's our high key mono picture, not the greatest picture there, but if we go ahead and click on edit we can also even do more in here now so we can actually change the lighting of the effect here so we can change the lighting after we've actually taken the picture which is awesome and you can see you can even change you know which effect is used right here as well but high key mono is the new one here in ios 13 you can see all the stuff you can change really really awesome so now in ios 13 beta 2 we do have audio sharing enabled so you can share your audio with another person with airpods so if you have airpods and another friend has airpods as well you guys can share music you can play the same music on both sets of airpods at the same time so to achieve this all you have to do is go to the airplay menu you can get to this from either three touching right here or inside of the music application just click this button down here in the middle and then you will see your headphones show up right there so you can see I have two sets right there the airpods and the airpods 2 now to connect to both of them it's very easy you just simply tap on both of them and it will connect 
to both of them right there. So you can also adjust the volume for each individual AirPod. And I did notice here in beta two that this is a bug where one of the headphones, one of the AirPods, you can't control volume to until you disconnect it and reconnect it. So you can see I am reconnecting to the one that didn't show the volume, and then I will be able to control the volume for both sets of AirPods. So there you go, you can see it does work now and you can adjust the volume individually for each AirPod right there. So like I said, it is a little bit buggy at times and I have not found out the way to get the prompt, the pop-up that Apple showed at WWDC where you basically just hover your device over the other device and it pulls up a little prompt that says, do you wanna share audio? So I've not been able to get that to work. If I do find out how to get that working, I will report back on that in my follow-up video later this week. But this is definitely a cool feature and again, I love the fact that you can do it straight from within the platter right here, just anywhere where you have the menu there for your AirPlay, you can control the volume and everything i love this feature so now the files application also supports apfs drives so if you use external storage especially for your ipad apfs drives will now be supported with the files application so you'll be able to move you know and see all of your files on those hard drives so add that in with the fact that you can now connect to a server here in the files application this becomes a much bigger deal for those of you who use your ipad as your workhorse and you know do a lot of work on it so these are some awesome additions to the files application here in beta 2. So now you can use a custom ringtone in beta two. So for some reason in beta one, when you would actually, you know, put a custom ringtone in here, it wouldn't play it and it would just play the default reflection ringtone instead. Also in beta two, you can now press anywhere inside of the platter right here for your connections to actually pull up the more detailed view and see your airdrop and everything. So in beta one, you could actually just click in the middle. So like you had to be like in the middle of all the icons. If you were to click on like the Bluetooth or the cellular, you could see how it wouldn't pick it up and it would not open the platter. But in beta two, you can do that. So let me show you. So I'm on the Bluetooth right now and you can see it does open up the full platter there. So now it doesn't matter where you press in beta two, it opens up the full platter for a more detailed view and where you can see airdrop and everything like that. So I really like this change because I was pretty annoying in beta one. I did notice that when I was playing around with it here on my iPhone 10R. So yeah, those are some of the new features and changes I noticed here in beta two so far. Again, I will be covering more later in the week, but now let's move on to some of the bugs and the battery life and the performance and everything, how it was performing on beta one and if it's gonna be any different here on beta two. Now, before we get into that, I did just want to say that if you're wondering about iPad OS 13 beta 2, it was pretty much the same. You can see here it's pretty much the same file size as it was on my 10R. And I haven't noticed any other changes aside from what we have on iOS just yet. But again, if I do discover those, I will make another video later this week. All right, so now let's move on to some of the bugs that we've been facing here in beta 1 and also now in beta 2. So the first thing I actually noticed when I downloaded beta 2 here is that the music application just crashed multiple times on both my iPad and on my iPhone 10R here. I had to quit the application a couple times, but after about the third try on both devices, the music application opened up and worked normally. But if you were having that issue, let me know down in the comment section below. That's definitely new here in beta two. Now, before I move on, I do just wanna mention that Apple did actually release the release notes from beta two. So that's the full list of bug fixes. If you do wanna see that, I will leave it linked down in the description below. I'm just gonna cover bugs that you guys have been facing and that I've personally been facing. And if you're interested in all the other ones, again, I will leave that linked down in the description below but anyways one of the bugs one of the big bugs I had in beta 1 was for some reason some of the settings panels I couldn't even open them so for example iTunes and App Store I can actually now go in it in beta 2 and beta 1 I was not even able to go inside of this settings pane right here we just crashed the settings application every time even if I rebooted no matter what I did I could not go into the iTunes and App Store section right there but thankfully that's been fixed here in beta 2 on my iPhone 10R. now another issue I was facing was on the lock screen so for some reason the camera and the flashlight would just not show up. And this happened multiple times. I did take screenshots of this as well. So you can see here, this is a screenshot I took on June 7th. And you can see down there, I do not have any of my toggles. So for some reason, they were just completely missing. And this happened multiple times to me. I also saw multiple people report this over on Twitter as well. And luckily I have not experienced this yet in beta two, but I will be monitoring that to see if it does come back. Another bug that's more related to battery life is that the battery actually drains super quickly, especially when playing games like Fortnite with controllers. So I noticed this, especially on my iPad Pro here. I did also notice it on my iPhone 10R, but my battery would be draining super quick and my phone would be getting hot. My iPad would be getting hot 
when playing with a controller. But when I wasn't playing with a controller, it wasn't as bad. So I'm sure that has to do with just the optimization since it is a new feature and everything. So that was kind of expected, but I did just want to mention it. So you can see the keyboard is actually super laggy still here in beta two. So I'm not sure what it is about the keyboard and maybe the addition of the new Memojis right there that's causing these issues. But this is also an issue for me in beta one. The keyboard would just be really laggy, especially when it came to the emojis right here. So it looks like that still isn't fixed in beta two. I'm hoping that Apple does do something about this because it's really annoying when you're trying to type something and it's just lagging right here and you can't really scroll through the pages. Now the mail application was also giving me a lot of issues on beta one. So for some reason I couldn't even delete these emails out of my trash, but now in beta two, I am able to actually delete them by just clicking edit and then delete it like that. I could also swipe over and delete now, whereas in beta one, I would delete them and then they would just come right back into the trash. But yeah, like I mentioned, I did ask you guys over on Twitter what kind of bugs you were facing and I got some feedback over there as well. So I just wanna talk about some of these really quickly. So you can see some people reporting that they weren't able to turn on the flashlight from the lock screen widget. Uh, people talking about bad battery life that got 10 likes. So a lot of people having bad battery life and we'll talk about that here in a second on beta one. And then you can see right here, somebody said that the lyrics are not even showing up in their music application. I never experienced that. Lyrics have always worked fine for me, even on beta one and they work fine on beta two as well. You can see there we have some random resprings. Wi-Fi stops searching for networks. Control center doesn't open on the lock screen. And then here's somebody talking about swiping through the emojis as well. That was an issue. So you can see their music app crashing and music stopping. You can see I can't upload videos on my status, mail and battery. And there's also a lot of compatibility issues with applications in iOS 13 as well. You can see somebody here is talking about Spotify crashing every five minutes. Multiple people also talked about other applications crashing. And just for example, you can see here Asphalt 9, even on beta two is not gonna work. It's just gonna crash on iOS 13 just because the app is not fully updated to support iOS 13 just yet. So you can see there it just crashes, it plays a little bit of music and then crashes. And that just has to do with developers and updating their applications. It is gonna take some time, especially since we're still in the early beta stages of iOS 13. So anyways, let's go ahead and discuss battery life and the performance on beta one and how it's gonna change with betas moving forward. So first of all, the battery life, again, has been pretty bad for me and pretty much everybody else. I haven't really seen anybody report getting great battery life on iOS 13 beta one. It's either been just good, okay, or pretty bad. And for me, it's just been pretty bad. Now I do need to clarify that I have not used iOS 13 on my daily driver device just yet. So I don't really have the full battery experience, but I did just load beta two on my daily driver. So I would definitely have a lot more, you know, insight as to battery life when it comes to beta two. Later this week in the video, I will talk a lot more about battery life and how it's been treating me. But even on my iPhone 10 I do use this pretty much all day, every day. And I will say that battery life has not been great. I mean, it drains a lot in applications. And again, that could just be in an app compatibility issue. I'm not sure if it's a software issue, but I'm definitely hoping that beta two does fix battery life because I find myself only getting about five and a half to six hours of on-screen time. And you know, I would go to bed with about maybe 10 to 15% battery remaining, which is really bad, especially compared to my iPhone XS Max. So I will be letting you guys know if the battery does improve over the next couple of betas. Now on the other side of things, when it comes to performance, performance has actually been great on iOS 13. Now this is excluding like the app compatibility issues and the applications crashing, excluding that performance has actually been really good. I mean, especially when it comes to just fluidity and the animations on the home screen, opening up applications, everything, even on the iPad as well, things are really smooth and really fast for me. And when it comes to performance and battery life on beta two, it feels about the same so far, but again, it is too early to tell. I wouldn't imagine we'd really get a huge boost in battery life or performance until maybe like beta four, beta five or something like that. Usually just from one beta to another, is it gonna see a huge increase in either performance or battery life? Now, for some reason, a lot of people reported issues with iPad OS 13 beta one. A lot of people reported that it was basically like unusable, but for me, I never even had to, you know, consider downgrading back to iOS 12 because it's been perfectly fine for me. I mean, I have not really had any issues and I use this thing every single day since, you know, the beta came out. So I've not had any issues on iOS 13 beta one or iPad OS 13 beta one when it comes to just general performance. And I will also say that I was surprised by the performance on the iPhone SE. The iPhone SE actually performs really well here on iOS 13 as well. And I was definitely not expecting that. So if you guys want to see a full video talking about iOS 13 on the iPhone SE, let me know because I definitely am impressed 
with how the iPhone SE is performing here on iOS 13. I did just update this guy to beta two as well. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for iOS 13 beta two. Again, I will be covering more of the features and changes. I'll be talking more about the battery life and performance later on this week in a follow-up video. So definitely make sure you are subscribed to the channel with those notifications turned on so you don't miss those videos. And if you guys did enjoy this video, I know it was a little bit long, but I just wanted to cover pretty much everything. So if you guys did enjoy it, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up. And of course, stay tuned for the follow-up video later this week. And if you guys found any other features and changes in beta 2, let me know down in a comment below, because again, I am sure that I missed some of them. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you soon.